I love comfrey, and I, I'm actually a, still a great advocate for comfrey. I'm not at all convinced that it's bad for you in any form. I'm respectful of some of my peers' concerns about using it. And so, because I don't think that I have all the answers for anything, I don't really try to assume that I know that it's perfectly benign, you know, 100% benign. So I do have respect for, you know, some of my very wise peers who feel that it shouldn't be used. But um, I just feel, for, for many number of reasons, I feel the tests, when I've read those tests and studied them, they seem completely inconclusive to me. The more modern research that's gone back and evaluated those tests show that those studies were very inconclusive. Uh, comfrey has very minor amounts of PAs. You know, it's not enough to be harmful. Even if you eat it in the young leaves and even if you eat the roots and even if you eat them in large amounts, there's just not enough PAs in there to really harm, you know, from your regular comfrey varieties to really harm a person. And also because comfrey has had such a long history of being used by humans for medicine and food and for animals as a fodder. And the argument is, is that, well, PAs and uh, the veno occlusive liver disorder doesn't reveal itself immediately. You know, you can eat it for a long time and then, you know, this could show up months later. But I don't believe that the, the ancient people and the ancestors, I don't believe that all of our knowledge came through trial and error. I believe that some of it did, but I'm certain that it all didn't because we'd still be out there, you know, trying to figure out three-fourths of the plants on this planet, what they did. I think it was just transmitted energy, that it was, you know, there was a time when people lived in such close relationship to the plants and all of nature. They just knew things about those plants. Just like you do today, there's times when you're out walking and you just get a clear revelation about a plant that you never met before. You didn't read about it, it just comes to you. And so many, this isn't me, this isn't like a unique experience. I've heard hundreds of people say that and I've had it happen to me numerous times. So I think that if comfrey was a toxic, toxic plant for people, they would have known that a long time ago and we would have gone back to those herb books that were written 500 years ago or 400 years ago and we would have found that information. We would have seen somewhere that it would say this is good for healing bones and joints but it should be used with caution. Just like so many of the plants that we use, the cautions are in there. The language is archaic but, but the caution's in there. It's available. We can understand it. There's nothing that indicates that about comfrey. And so comfrey, I love it. You know, again, I love it because it's delicious. It's very healing. You can you know, that one of the things I think why I'm such an advocate for comfrey is there are a few plants that you can really substitute for it that work as well. You know, we have such a huge plant community that, you know, if you, don't, if you decide not to use one plant or it's not available, it's not such a big thing because there's another plant that will stand in for it. With comfrey, it's hard to find something that's as good that will stand in for it. So here you have a supreme mucilaginous plant. It's very soothing to the respiratory in your lungs, your vaginal area, your digestion. You have a plant that's incredibly high in calcium, you know, which is very good. For, you know, I'm a vegetarian, so I'm always looking for high calcium foods. You have a plant that's very rich in minerals and iron and very, you know, delicious. And then you have a plant that there's very few plants that help the joints and the bones to heal the way this plant does. So, you know, just even today I was talking to a woman who's a very good friend of mine and she's having joint problems. And, you know, 20 years ago I would have just said, you should take comfrey, you know. And, drink comfrey every day and you can't really say that today because you know people will be worried and concerned and I, I'm a believer that you really shouldn't offer people plants that will make them there's so many things in life that make people nervous you don't want to say well here's a plant and I think it's safe but other people don't and you know you confuse people with that so I use it I, I've used it I use it all the time in large amounts my family uses it in large amounts a lot of herbalists that I know use it in large amounts all believing what I believe and then some people don't so it's controversial for people but I like controversy I don't mind at all so comfrey is one and you know I also feel with comfrey on a very personal level it helped me heal one time I feel I'm walking because of comfrey so I feel I owe it a big favor and to be an advocate for it it's never good to spit in the face of somebody that helps you it's always good to kiss them in the face so, you know, when I, with that little leg accident, big leg accident that happened a number of years ago, I had one leg that healed up really rapidly, but the other leg was very deeply injured and the bone, the bones had come out on both legs, but one leg wasn't healing well. And so the doctor said there was absolutely no way that it would heal unless I had a metal plate put in it. And I just didn't, I didn't believe him. And so for 18 and a half months, I kept this cast on um, and I drank comfrey in every form you could possibly imagine. 
and I have a very good working leg, you know. So some of it could have been time, some of it could have been comfrey, some of it could have been the faith of a child. You know, I was very young, I was in my early 20s at that time. We never really know what the factors are, but altogether my leg is great. So. Symphytum officinalis, or comfrey. Uh, there are several, many, many species of comfrey. This is probably Russian comfrey. The flower is very, very beautiful. I have no problem eating that flower. It tastes pretty nice. Actually, nothing spectacular about it, but it's good enough. The whole plant is, is an incredible herb. The leaves are, are used for lung problems, for drying mucus, and for also uh, helping good mucus to become established in the uh, upper respiratory tract. Remember, you can, you, while uh, you can have too much mucus that would cause you to be susceptible to allergies, you can also have too little mucus as well, which cause for lung dryness and a dry cough. And uh, comfrey is an herb which, which actually regulates f fluid secretion, and increases moisture, and gets rid of uh, obnoxious mucus that your body doesn't need. Mm, I got to get rid of this flower from my mouth because. Despite the fact that it has a drying, it has lubricating properties, it's also drying. <laughs> and so it was doing that job on me. Uh, and this, the leaf is used for back pain, for joint pains, for promoting healing. It's used as a poultice externally, and it's also used internally for the same purposes. The most powerful part of the plant is the part that makes it almost, uh, it's one of those plants you need to be very careful about planting in your garden, let's put it that way. Once you get a comfrey plant planted, you're never going to get rid of it entirely. Uh, comfrey has sprouted up all over my garden. I might have thought a little more carefully if I had thought, was thinking when I planted it here and saying, how much comfrey do I want? <laughs> because uh, those roots might go down six, nine feet deep. And any little piece of the plant, any little piece of the root will make a full grown plant. So you try to eliminate and dig that root out as best you can. The more you dig it up, the more you're chipping away at it, the more pieces are flying all over the place. That's probably what happened, why this comfrey's coming up all over the place, because I tried to get rid of it once, probably, here. And, and, uh, and it's everywhere. It's in the garden and uh, everywhere in this part of, the, part of the yard where it was just planted as one solitary plant. Uh, the root is called knit bone. Uh, you can take, uh, at least Dr. Christopher used to say that you could take uh, a slimy root of comfrey, smash it up, and to put the slime on, on meat that has been cut and it will cause the meat to actually begin to, to uh, f form fibers and knit together. I've never done that, but I do know that if you have back pain, disc problems and collapsed discs and, and, and uh, joint pains that, that with degeneration of joint and bones, comfrey is the best herb that I can think of in the West for healing that. Uh, one of the problems, of course, in, in, in Western herbalism is, the, uh, is bringing science back into herbs has created uh, sometimes a, a boon in terms of helping us to amplify our information, but sometimes creating a curse in terms of, uh, of an herbalist faith in his plants. Uh, at least for 15, 20 years, uh, I've used comfrey indiscriminately. I gave it, and we gave it uh, all the time as a standard thing for women who are pregnant. And, uh, and, and because we thought, well, you know, it, it, it creates cell proliferation, it would help a developing fetus. Never any problems. I gave it together with raspberry leaf tea and comfrey, comfrey leaf tea for pregnant women. Never any problems. Uh, I knew a man in the commune. Who got that comfrey messing up in my throat? I knew a man in the commune who had uh, severe debilitating back pain, and uh, he he could no longer work. And uh, every day he would come out and dig up a, a piece of comfrey root about that big, and just walk around all day long chewing on that slimy, old, old nasty-tasting root. And, and he, after two or three weeks, the back pain was completely gone. It had healed. And, uh, and, and so that was one of the ways he, he treated it. I used to make a, uh, teach people how to make comfrey mucilage, uh, which is a, uh, using with a, uh, uh, molasses, which is a good, a good thing to use for strengthening the blood, together with comfrey root, and taking a teaspoon or tablespoon of that for strengthening the blood and for promoting healing. Never a problem. All of a sudden, uh, there's, there, there's, a, there's thousands and thousands of people taking comfrey all over the world. 
selling it in, in uh, capsules for, uh, to, to enhance pepsin and digestion. And everybody was taking comfort, getting great results. And we hear of maybe a, a handful of cases of all of those people uh, who, who may have gotten a, a liver disease called veno-occlusive disease. Uh, it's, a, it's a very bad liver disease. People die of this condition because it means your, your liver swells up and everything gets blocked and everything circulates. Not a good way to go, by the way. And uh, so uh, they, they, they attributed this to, the, to comfrey, specifically a chemical, which they, a biochemical thing, agent in comfrey called pyrolizidine alkaloids. And uh, they said the pyrolizidine alkaloids are well known in other plants uh, to cause this condition. And therefore, since they found it in comfrey, it must be that comfrey does this also. I question the thesis of that, but it's hard, it's hard to not let science get to you once, once, once the word's out about stuff like that. Uh, all I can say is that I still use comfrey in the ways that I describe. I, uh, I don't necessarily uh, tell my students to use it without giving them the, 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 the other side of it, but I also tell them that I've used it for 25 years before I ever knew, knew anything about that. And, and, and f the worst thing of all, of course, is, is that you don't want to give uh, pyrolizidine plants to, to developing babies and fetuses when their livers are still growing. And here I, here I was giving it to mothers who were pregnant at Black Bear. There was never a, a single case of anybody with liver failure that ever developed and from a lot of comfrey that was taken there. So, I, you know, that's my experience. To me, that experience is gold. And you'll have to decide whether the, whether the, the non-experience of scientific reasoning based on the presence of trace amounts of pyrolizidine alkaloids in comfrey is more important than the experience of an herbalist who had 25 years using it that way and many other herbalists. It's a question that I think we'll, we'll, we'll just have to leave for you to decide. So comfrey, um, Symphytum officinal, comfrey is a wonderful herb for salves and the leaves are quite large on this particular comfrey plant. This is an herb that has a long tradition of use for healing injured tissue, for helping to repair bones. There's been some controversy about using comfrey internally in recent years. There's an alkaloid in comfrey called pyrolizidine and there's some concern that ingesting large amounts of pyrolizidine alkaloids might be contraindicated, but there is certainly only benefit to be obtained from using comfrey topically in salves, in poultices. So a poultice can be something just as simple as you drop a brick on your foot, you go collect some comfrey leaves, smash them up, you can mix it with a little water and then wrap it around your toe or your ankle or whatever part has been injured. Comfrey contains a compound called allantoin, which is a cell proliferant. So whenever there's been injury to the body, um, it is something that's going to help prevent scarring, help to heal tissue. And even though it is somewhat controversial, uh, many herbalists do not use comfrey internally anymore, but there are some herbalists who will use it for a short period of time. For example, during a broken bone where you really want to speed up healing, it's often mixed with other herbs like nettle and horsetail. But it really is one of my favorite herbs for treating tissue wounds and it's very easy to grow.